Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Happy Friday. It's the weekend. Can you believe it? Well, I'll tell you what I can't believe <laughs> is that from the time that I started filming videos, which was about an hour and a half ago, um, it has dropped about 10 degrees and gotten very cold. I actually, I had on shorts earlier. I had to put on, go upstairs and put my sweatpants on. And um, it was sunny and cloudy and sunny and cloudy, but it was pretty nice. There was like something, oh, there's a bug on my, my camera. And um, so anyway, I was getting everything set up to come out here and film the vlog. Alex just came downstairs, he heated up some food and he is watching Shit's Creek. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna go outside and vlog. I'd already kind of decided um, going into today that I was gonna film, I wasn't gonna film a drama video today. I have like five or six videos that I want to film for my drama channel, but I was like, I think I'm just going to take the day off from filming on my drama channel. Um, and so I knew I wanted to film on my Peter Does Stuff channel because I wanted to announce the movie for Peter's movie night over there. And then um, I had been wanting to make this announcement on my reality TV channel that I'm going to... Uh, be not just doing reality TV over there, but I'm gonna be doing all kinds of TV shows over there as well. <clears throat> and so I've been wanting to do that, announce that, but um, I woke up today <laughs> to all these DMs and text messages from people about the fact that The Golden Bachelor is filing for divorce. Gary, Jerry, and Teresa are divorcing after three months of being married. So I like combined that into a video and I made those videos and I made a Peterism's video. And it was like, do you see it's like the sun is like coming out and it's going down. Well, I just like made, was making coffee. I brought the camera out here, was getting it set up. I went inside to go upstairs and put my sweatpants on. And when I came out here, it was like pouring down rain. And it like, I, it just rained. You can see it's like the, well, I don't know if I'll, you'll be able to see it on here, but like the, ground is like soaking wet it literally rained for like five minutes i think we're supposed to get some rain tonight it like poured down rain for like five minutes and then it just stopped because i was like oh i'm not gonna be able to vlog alex has been so sweet he was like it was so windy out here earlier he worked this morning and then he came home he got home about 1 30 something like that 1 or 1 30 and he was like if you want to i'll just put my airpods on if you want to film inside and i was like no i want to film outside today and whatever because it was pretty it was pretty nice but it was so windy but then I just didn't want to film inside. The, the lighting inside, unless I put up the ring light, is bad. And I haven't put that ring light up in so long that I don't know how long. I'm actually the chair that I sit in and to watch TV where I used to film and stuff. Um, I've been looking for uh, a new chair. and But I want a chair that has an ottoman as well. And I want like a big, comfortable chair that we can like, you know, hang. Like if he's watching TV, he likes to lay on the couch. Um, I like to lay on the couch sometimes, but I, if I lay on the couch, I start getting really sleepy and fall asleep. So it's easier for me to like sit in a chair, but I want a really big comfy chair with an ottoman. And so I started looking on Wayfair last night. Wayfair, they, it's so interesting because they have a range of chairs that are like what I'm looking for. And they range from like $200 with a chair for a chair and ottoman for like, for like $200 all the way to like, $2,500, $2,500. It's like, what do you want? Well, I don't want the $2,000 chair. I know that. Um, but I'm thinking about getting another chair in there. We've had that chair forever. So I was waiting until we redid the inside and had it painted and everything like that to get new furniture. But I mean, that could be another two to three years before we actually, the living room is the last thing that we're doing. So it could be, you know, two to three, four years before we get to that. So, um, I'm like, I'm just gonna buy a chair for the living room that we can have and we can enjoy. So I'm gonna have Alex look at some chairs too. So anyway, um, so yeah, so then I like put on my like coat cause I was like, it's gonna start, I, it was raining. You can, I don't know if you can see this, but on this table right here, there's like rain spots because it was raining up here. And I was like, I'm not gonna be able to sit in this chair cause it's gonna be raining. And Alex is watching Shit's Creek eating food inside. So I was like, where am I gonna vlog? But God must have wanted me to vlog because it stopped raining <laughs> and now it's nice outside. <laughs> I mean, it's not nice, but it's typical spring in Indiana, which means that it can be like 70 to 80 during the day or 50 to 60 during the day. It just depends on the day. And then at night, it can either be very nice and warm, like 60, it can just drop like five degrees and be like 65, 75, or it can drop really low and be like 35, 40. Last night it was cold. I was sitting in the chair and I was watching Fear of the Walking Dead. 
and I had the window open. I had it like the sliding glass door and I had my candles lit. It was so cozy inside. I was drinking coffee and I had the door like open like halfway and then I like was getting really cold. I had a sweatshirt on and I had like sweatshorts on and I was like, I have to um, close the door. All I have to like close it a little bit more and then I had to close it all the way because it was getting so cold. Like the, it was because it was kind of windy last night. So it was like coming in through the door and stuff like that. But I was walking around the house last night and like just like cleaning up and stuff between episodes and it smelled so good and it smelled like so springy and clean and gets fresh air. I just love getting fresh air in the house. So, so yeah. And then the last two nights I've had a really, really hard time falling asleep. Um, and it's, it's my leg cramps are back. It's mostly my leg cramps. It's not that I like, I start like falling asleep and then all of a sudden my legs are just like really, really uncomfortable and I toss and turn and I don't know what that's from. A lot of people have told me magnesium mag that helps with that. Magnesium doesn't really help me at all. My friend Valerie told me like a specific kind to get. I got that. I took it for a while. It didn't really help me. Um, I don't know if it's a side effect from sleeping medication. I don't know what it is, but like my legs just get really, really crampy at night. So. I didn't sleep great the last two nights, and I'm, I'm, I'm like alert and I'm awake, but I'm tired at the same time. So, goals for this weekend are to get really far in, so last night I watched, did we, what did Alex and I watch first last night, Thursday? What did we watch first? We caught up on something. Oh, we watched Delicate, American Horror Story. It's still really bad. Alex, at the end of it, he goes, I don't even understand what's going on in this show. <laughs> For Alex to say that about American Horror Story is like, that's a lot, right? And so he's like, I don't even know what's going on with that show. So we watch that. Oh, and then we watch Watch What Happens Live because it had Michaela Rodriguez, who sh she is in um, American Horror Story Delicate, but she was also in Pose. I love her so much. She's in Loot um, with Maya Rudolph. And she plays the director of the foundation that Maya Rudolph owns in there. And then they have this comedian on there. I don't know who he is. He has his own reality show. I'd never heard of him before. And so we watched that. And then I was like, I'm going to lay down for a little bit before I, because I wanted to like binge watch Fear the Walking Dead and finish it last night. I just made some coffee. Okay, so I want to say this before I get into this. So this is strawberry and cream. This is the, the Good and Gather from Target. This is strawberry, not strawberry and cream, strawberry cream. I haven't tried this yet. This is, I think the, I think this is the first time I'm trying it. It's so funny because when I talk about like flavored coffee, like I go through periods where I like hot coffee and then I don't like hot coffee. And then I only like iced coffee. And then I don't like flavored coffee. I only like regular coffee and then I like I like the syrups in my coffee, but since I'm trying to be healthier, I'm not been I haven't been really using the syrups very often. And then I go through and I use like the the sugar substitutes, like the sweet and lows or whatever. And then I I don't use anything at all for like the last I would say like unless we go to like when I go to Patashu, I always use like I use like the raw sugar in my coffee, like just one packet of it. But at home, even though I have it sitting right out there, I don't usually ever put any like sweet and low or sugar or anything. And I haven't been using the syrups. Last week, I think one day I pumped some syrup into it. I think I even talked about it on here. So this is the strawberry and cream from Good and Gather, the Target brand. You ready? So, oh, this was going to say about the, the, the flavored coffee. Because I probably said it on this vlog that I can't stand flavored coffee. And then I go through periods where I love it. Fall and winter, I usually love flavored coffee. In the summer, I love more of just like a really, and I wanna, I'm going to get to this in just a second, a medium or a, like a dark roast or like an iced coffee. Like, well, I, in the summer, that's not true. In the summer, I like a blonde roast. In the winter, I like a more of like a dark roast. I like a lighter roast in the summer. And I got that backwards. And so, um... And then I usually just drink it like, well, I, I feel like I go through periods. I don't know if it really has to do with time, but right now I'm really into the flavor of coffee. But one of the things I love about it is, is that it smells more in the kitchen. Like in the kitchen when I was making the coffee, I was like, oh, that really does smell like strawberry, strawberry cream coffee. But like when you taste it, it'll taste a little bit like it, but it won't taste. None of the coffees that I have that are flavored have like an overwhelming flavor to them or I wouldn't drink them. I don't love like 
really heavily flavored coffee and stuff like that, which is one of the reasons why I don't usually put I, some, but see, I say this and then next week I'll be like, I just bought a bunch of cream for my coffee. I don't typically put a lot of cream on my coffee. So anyway, here, let's try this real quick. Cheers. Oh, that's good. It's really good. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't really know. <laughs> hey, what kind of coffee I like, when I like it. I guess my tastes constantly change with coffee. But one thing I do want to say is, because I got this comment on my blog yesterday. So, I said about the Cinnabon coffee that I'm really into like a medium or a dark roast. And it's a medium roast. I said that in my vlog the other day. And somebody commented and said they looked it up. Um, and... They said that they really like a medium to dark roast too, but they were like, did you find it somewhere else? Because online it says it's a light roast. I had not even looked on the box. I don't like, I'm not, I don't look at the details of the box that much. I just kind of like, when I taste it, I'm like, oh, it, it tastes like a darker roast to me. When I taste like, like the, the, whatever the blonde roast is that I used to get from Starbucks. When I would get that, like you can taste that it's a lighter one than if you, and then if you drink like the dark blend, right? Like you can tell that it's, it's, it's like a, a medium to darker roast than the blonde roast. At Starbucks, you can totally tell the difference. At Dunkin' Donuts, you can tell the difference too. That's kind of what I mean. Like when I mean like a medium to a darker roast, it's like stronger, it feels stronger, right? So I hadn't even looked. And so I got that comment and I was like, is it a light roast? Because when I drank that Cinnabon coffee, it has like a really strong roast to it. It's like a really, it, it seems like a dark roast. Maybe not like a dark, dark roast, like an, almost like an espresso, but like more of like a medium roast to it. And so, I went and I looked on the box and I couldn't see it on the word on the box, so I was like looking it up online. So, Cinnabon, from what I could find, has two different kinds of coffee. And they have the one that I bought, which is a light roast. I did not know it was a light roast. It doesn't taste like a light roast to me. It tastes more of like a medium roast to me. I like it because I like like, and when I mean, when I, how I define like a medium roast, I mean like more of like a robust, like if I like a, like when I'm in the mood for like, a, what I mean by dark roast, like I mean like strong, strong coffee, almost like an espresso. That's what I mean by like a dark roast. Medium roast is like just full flavored coffee. A light roast for me is almost kind of like, not a watered down coffee, but a very, it's very light. It's not like, like when I, when I, sometimes like in the hot heat of summer, I want like an espresso and it's like, mm, and you can, like you can feel it, you know? That Cinnabon coffee is a light roast, because I look, she was right, whoever commented on that. So thank you for bringing it to my attention, but, um, it is a light roast, but it tastes to me, like if I hadn't looked, I would have guessed it was like a medium roast, medium to dark roast, because it seems that way to me, but I guess it's a light roast. But they do have one that I, I saw on there, I didn't see this when I was at, this. I didn't see it at Target, I had never seen this on Amazon either, but they apparently have one that's called Cinnabon, and it's like caramel, pecan, they have two. They have the regular cinema, Cinnabon, um, cinnamon uh, bun coffee or whatever and then they have a second one which is like caramel pecan something and it's a it's a medium roast the regular one is a light roast but it doesn't taste like a light roast to me like this tastes like a light roast to me yeah this is like a, a like a light like a light I would say like a light to medium more of like on the the stronger end of a light. But this is a light roast. I would now people are gonna look it up and they're gonna be like it's a dark roast. I'm gonna be like, what the I don't know. I don't know my coffee at all. <laughs> when I think of like a dark roast, I'm thinking of like, what's the one that comes I, I just bought a bunch of the K pods of it like two months ago or a month ago. That comes in the yellow box and it's like an almost an espresso blend. Like that's what I mean by like a dark roast or like the Folgers dark roast, you know? That's what I mean, like by a dark, dark roast. Um, like this is light and airy. This is like what you would drink like in the afternoon and then you're gonna take a nap or something like that. But anyway, maybe I don't know anything about roast. Maybe I need to do a whole education on coffee beans because I don't know anything about it. I probably should do that. I'm gonna look into that tonight and like read some things because I'm probably completely wrong about what I'm talking about. But, um, so yeah, so, I, but I just wanted to clear that up. And, and they said if you could, and the person with the comment said if you can find a medium roast. They don't have the Cinnabon in a medium roast. They only have it in a light roast. But the other 
flavor that they have is a medium roast. But I don't know if that sound caramel pecan doesn't sound like. I mean, I might get it to try. And now watch, I'll turn around and get it tonight because I'll be like, I really want to try this now that I've talked so much about it. But anyway, um, so yeah. So after we watched our shows last night, I lay down for a little bit. I got up and then I like lit the candles. I did something first. What did I do? Oh, I've been reading my graphic novel because I'm really trying to get that one done. I actually was looking up the Fear of the Walking Dead graphic novels last night. The last two nights I was looking them up, but last night I got really into it because a couple years ago, well, this is how I really got started like on the whole graphic novel thing. Other than back in the day when I was like in high school and college, my friend and I, we used to read those Linda Berry comics. But I don't know that I wouldn't necessarily refer to those as like a graphic novel. They would today, but I don't think back then they would have. They were just comics. And so, we used to have this newspaper here in Indianapolis called the Nuvo, and N-U-V-O, and they used to have Linda Berry's cartoons in the very back of there. I think that's how I found, found her. She was friends with like, or she is friends, I don't know, with Matt Groening, who did the, the, the Simpsons and stuff like that. But anyway, um, so... I don't know how long ago it was. It must have been when I first started walking The Walking Dead, which I feel like is forever ago that I started watching The Walking Dead. I don't even I don't even know what year I started it, but I bet it's like probably the first year that it came out was when I first started watching it. I don't have my phone out here, so whenever that was. Um, but I was looking at the the graphic novels last night, so I can remember we went over to our friend's house. Their girls were little at that time. They were probably like. 8 and 10 or something like that and now they're like 23 and 25 25 something like that okay it couldn't have been that long ago but anyway they were like they as a family would read the walking dead graphic novels or maybe just the husband and wife did i can't remember but anyway this is like these friends of ours that we used to go to their house over all the time for family dinners and like they would make family dinners on Sundays for their them and their daughters. Like our friend, the wife, she's a fantastic cook. And so we would go over there and they used to have like Friendsgiving and stuff like that. As their daughters got older, they stopped kind of like doing stuff like that. But anyway, so I think they always kind of like felt bad for us or like Peter and Alex like don't cook home cooked meals. So we would go over there and she would cook us home cooked meals and we'd all sit around. But anyway, I remember one time we were talking about the graphic, The, the Walking Dead. Maybe it was a couple years after it came out. And um, they were talking about how they were the graphic novels. And so I went to Half Price Books and I bought like the first four. I think I have like the first two or maybe first three or four. Well, I went last night and I looked. There's like 22 or 24 of them. I didn't realize that. So I think once I get done with this one, so I'm right now reading this Juliet um, graphic novel. It's actually really good. It's really, really good. And, um, and then I'm reading Fangirl, the manga. I'm like halfway through that. I could probably, I, I literally could probably just sit down here and finish both of those in like two hours if I just actually sat down. But I read a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, I love reading graphic novels. And so I want to finish both of those this week and that's my goal. But then I think I'm going to start reading the, the, oh, I have so many graphic novels now to read. But I think I might, I mean, I can read like, somebody said the other day in one of my videos, they're like, I'm, I, I love that Peter can, read like so many different physical copy books at the same time i can't I, i'm not somebody that can do that but hold on just a second um but i think i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna start reading the uh walking dead graphic novels so i'm not somebody that can sit down like i couldn't with a physical copy book read like two two or three mysteries at the same time but what i can do is with graphic novels I usually only ever am reading one at a time, but just, I would say in the last six months, I've had like two or three going because I'll start one and then I'll get another one and then I'll want to start that one. And so I start like two or three at the same time. But the thing is, is that they're cartoons. I mean, they're not cartoons, they're illustra- some of them are. They're illustrations, they're graphic novels. So like, it doesn't feel the same to me as a physical copy book when I'm reading it. Like, it's like, I can read it and then like the fangirl manga, I haven't really like got into it's been probably a month and so i can pick it up and like i'm like oh yeah like i remember where i was i like look at the last page i'm like oh i totally remember where i was plus you can read like 50 to 100 pages like no time like nikki was reading the heartstopper books because she was like you really like the heartstopper books you know by alice osman 
And so she got them from the library. She read like the first one in like an hour. Like they're really easy just to like book through, right? Like these graphic novels. So I'm reading like two or three graphic novels right now. I'm reading, the, I have, I put all my books in the bookshelf. The only books that I have out on the counter are the books that I'm reading. So I have the Julia, the fangirl manga. I feel like I'm reading one other graphic novel. And then I'm reading the Jill McCorkle short stories, Crash Diet. And I'm reading the Raymond Carver, uh, what we talk about when we talk about love, short stories. But I feel like short story anthologies are completely different. Because I don't like start a short story unless I finish it. Like I won't like read like two pages of a short, if, it, if I'm gonna start a short story, I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna read the whole short story. So when I'm done, and, and most of those anthologies, well the, both of those anthologies I'm reading, like their characters aren't consistent. So it's like you read a short story and it's done. Like it's not like an anthology where they lead into one another. And so you can read just one and then leave the book and you could come back six weeks later or six months later and pick up the next one, right? So that's four books and then I'm reading that book that I started in Miami, which is called something about Ed or whatever, about the guy that dies from AIDS and his friendship and his relationship with that guy, the guy that writes the book. So that's like the fifth book that I'm reading. I feel like I have some other book there. Well, that literal mess, that cozy mystery that she start, told me to read, that I started reading like two years ago, like that's been on the counter forever. And I just need to start that book over. So I'm gonna start that book over, but I think this summer. It's really short too, I don't know why. I haven't gotten through that. So I have like those five or six books out there on the counter. So those are like five books, but two of them are graphic novels. Two of them are short story books, so it's really only one physical copy book that I'm really actually reading, reading, because the rest of them are just like, you know, well, I mean, they're all I'm reading, but it's not like I'm dedicated to like one story. And so I'm reading one physical copy book, and then I'm listening to an audiobook, and I'm listening to Murder Road by Simone St. James. I am not somebody that could like read two or three of the same books. If it was like I was reading like an autobiography and a fiction book, I could do that. I think that's one of the reasons why the book that I'm reading, I can do that and listen to Murder Row at the same time. Part of the reason why I have a hard time like reading several books is because like the stories start getting confusing to me. Especially if I was reading like several thrillers at the same time. I couldn't do that. Or several cozy mysteries. Several books of the same genre, I, I couldn't do at the same time. But to read like a short story here and there or, and I'm really liking it. I'm thinking for the summer for like the pool to like take a short story anthology up there and like read a short story. And then like, I would, you know, feel like I read a, I would, it wouldn't be like I had to read like a hundred pages of the pool. I'd feel like, okay, I did something, you know, like I just want to have a book that I can consistently take to the pool. And so I'm, I'm like loving sitting out here reading. And, um, so yeah, so laid down last night, got up and lit the candles and had the door open, made some coffee. And I, watched episode, season eight, episode eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I watched five episodes of Fear the Walking Dead and finished it. I'm thinking about doing a video on my Peter, Peter's reality TV. I don't know. I'm going to call that channel something different. Peter watches TV or something. I don't know. If you have a suggestion for what I should call it, put it in the comment section below. Some of you guys crack me up. I'm just going to say this and this is no shade. But when I ask for like titles for channels and stuff like that, sometimes you guys crack me up so bad because I have to tell you no shade whatsoever, but you're just as bad at coming up with titles as I am. Okay. Like the truth. Some of the titles like crack me up so bad when people are like, oh my god, have you ever thought about calling it? And I don't even know what. You know, I'm just like, oh my god, this is so funny. <laughs> it reminds me of that episode of Roseanne. It always does whenever they're like naming the, the restaurant and like they can't come up with anything and Jackie goes, I got nothing. And then DJ goes, the lunch, what about the lunchbox? And they're like, they all look at him like he's crazy and then they call it the lunchbox because it's such a, such a fantastic name. But anyway, um... And that's no shade to anybody. I just want to tell you, like, you guys make me smile so hard. Like, when I, when I read the comments and people are like, you guys should call it, like, <laughs> it's so funny to me because I can tell you think the same way that I do. And it's like, you think too deep about it. I think sometimes just the simple, simplest route is, like, the easiest. It, there is, like, this huge, I don't know if you can see it with the, the is it, is it going to start raining? I don't know if you can see it with the, um, the lighting. But it's blue skies and white clouds over there. And then this huge gray cloud just came over the sky. Can you guys see it? I don't know if you can see it on the camera. 
But if you see in the distance, it's like blue clouds, or blue, and then sky, and then white clouds, and then this huge, I don't know if you can see it or not, if it's showing up. It's not really showing up, but this huge gray cloud is like coming from that side over. I don't know if it's going to start pouring down rain or something, but if it does, then I have to make an exit really quick. At least I got a little bit of a vlog done today. But yeah, so I watched those five episodes, and then I was, I went in to start watching Steven's season so, okay, on The Walking Dead, I don't, I must have at some point watched it on Netflix because, like, I must have started, I think last fall, I was like, I'm gonna go back and start watching The Walking Dead while I was watching Fear of the Walking Dead or something. I don't remember. Because I went in, and when I went in, you know, like, on Netflix, it'll show, like, it has, like, a red line at the bottom when you've watched all the way through a show, or it'll show you how far you've watched it or whatever. It showed, like, the last season that I'd watched was season, it was, like, when I pulled up The Walking Dead, it said season seven. <clears throat> And I was like on the fourth, I had finished the fourth episode. Well, I don't really remember a lot. I mean, I remember like pivotal points of the names of the characters and stuff like that. I remember like what had happened, where they were and whatever. But I didn't really remember specifics about how, like where I was left off. So I started watching the first, I was like, I'm going to go back and start watching season seven all over again. Because my plan is to watch, all finish it, watch... Because I, like, wa in real time, watch, like, the first four or five seasons. And then I think I caught up on the la the last two. Over, I think I watched, like, the first four seasons, like, when it was on TV. And then five and six, like, I caught up with later. Um, here comes an Amazon truck. Could it be for me? I don't think there's anything from Amazon that I've ordered that I don't. No, they went the other way. Um... So I have season seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So I think there's eleven seasons total, maybe twelve. I think I have five. I, no, it's eleven seasons total. So I have five seasons to watch. But some of the seasons, like I was looking, like I think season seven is like sixteen episodes, season eight is like sixteen episodes. But then some seasons are like twenty-four episodes. So it's gonna take me a while to get through it. Um, I would love to say I could finish it like in the next you know week, but that's just a lot of TV. And plus, there's other shows right now that I want to watch too. <clears throat> so I um why does it feel like a Sunday to me all of a sudden it just feels like a Sunday I have like 15 thoughts going through my head can you tell I was thinking about like RuPaul's Drag Race and are we gonna watch it tonight so Alex was he went to work today he was going to brunch is possibly tomorrow he's got this event that he's going to in the afternoon for like an hour and then he's gonna maybe go to lunch with a girlfriend of his that's gonna meet him at this event Tonight, he was going to go out with his girlfriends to go hear some DJ downtown. <clears throat> but now he's like, I don't think I'm going to go. And I was like, why not? He's like, I just feel like staying at home tonight. He's like, I don't feel like going out or anything. So we'll probably watch RuPaul's Track Race a lot later tonight, which means I'm other than, oh, I've got Survivor of the Amazing Race. That was what I was going to watch last night, but I didn't catch up on it. So I've got those two shows, and I've got The Valley. I've still got to watch this weekend. And then The, the, the Walking Dead and whatever. So I started watching episode one of season seven, and this was like way late. I stayed up way late last night, and I was like, it starts with Rick looking at Negan and saying, I'm gonna kill you. I don't know if it won't be today, it won't be tomorrow, but one of these days I'm gonna kill you, because whoever, it's that the, the season six ends when they're like all on their knees and, and he picks somebody to kill. And I couldn't remember who, who died, and so, I was like, okay, they're going to show it. That's the season premiere. Maybe I watched every season, like, live up to then. Maybe that's what I did. And then I stopped at the end of season six, and I never started season seven. I don't remember why. I don't remember how I watched it. I don't know. Maybe I watched it the last seven years. You guys probably, some of you are like, oh, no, Peter, you watched it, like, the first year you were vlogging or something. I really don't remember. So I was like, I went back, because when you watch the first, like, five minutes, they don't let you know, like, who was killed. And I, honestly, I thought it was his son. And so, I was like, okay, I'm going to go back and watch part of the last episode of season six. So, I went back to the last episode of season six, and I watched, like, the last five minutes of it. And it just, like, they recapped the whole thing. So, then I watched, I have, like, I think I watched, did I watch the whole, I think I have, like, two minutes or five minutes left. My AirPods were dying, so I was like, okay, I'll just finish this tomorrow. But I'm, like, at the very end of the first episode of season seven. So, yeah, so the farthest I've ever made it is season seven, episode four. So once I get past that, I, I, I remember, I remembered season one, like, as it was happening. 
But honestly, um, well, I don't want to ruin it for anybody that hasn't watched it. I know the show has been out forever, but like the the one guy that dies first, that he kills first, I remember that he killed him. I don't know how I remembered him. For This is what I thought. I thought it's Rick's son, who I can't remember what his name is. I don't know why. The guy, the kid that wears the hat. I thought it was Rick's son that died when I started watching the episode. That's why I went back and watched season six, the final episode. So I was like, you, you think it's his son. The camera stopped. I can't believe I was at the 30 minute mark already. I was like, no, Peter, I remember this. You think it's his son, but it's not his son. And then it was like, I remembered, because somebody likes, and I was like, oh, it's him. I remember him. Because I can, it must be an episode two, because it doesn't happen in episode one. They're all like riding back together in a truck or something, and they're all real upset. And I remember them talking, and they like do like some montage of like showing this guy. I don't know how I remember that, but they talk about the, the guy that died. What I didn't remember was how the second person dies. And actually, I just said this to my therapist when was my therapy session yesterday because I was telling him I was going to watch it and he said when he stopped watching it was when this person died. I think I said it on the vlog yesterday even. And I was like, yeah, I remember him dying because he died like, and this is where my therapist, I mean, it was two seconds of our conversation, but where he <laughs> was right at the beginning because he's like, have you been watching these shows and we got right deep into the trauma narrative. I don't even think I talked about that yesterday, did I? Oh my God. Well, we're almost done with the trauma narrative, but... We were real deep into it yesterday. But right at the beginning, he's like, what have you been watching on TV? And I was telling him I was going to get start watching The Walking Dead. And he's like, I think I watched it up till so-and-so died. And I was like, I remember that because I remember him being on, like, a dumpster and, like, all of the dead, like, surrounding him. By the way, on Fear of the Walking Dead, when did they stop calling him The Walking Dead or The Dead and they started calling him Carry On? Like, that happened, like, in one episode. And I don't know if it had to do with Padre or what, but, like, if Padre called them Carry On and whatever, but all of a sudden they just started calling them Carry On, and I don't remember that happening. I don't remember that being, like, a big Fear of the Walking Dead. Like, they call them Walkers, and then... Or is that a Walking Dead thing, Walkers? I don't know. I'm so confused at this point. I feel like I've watched so much of it. I'm watching the end of Fear of the Walking Dead, and Dwight and Sherry are, like, driving off, and then... All of a sudden, I'm watching season one, or season seven, episode one, and there's Dwight trying to kill Daryl. And I'm like, <laughs> Dwight was just on Fear the Walking Dead, and it ended, and now Dwight's on, and I know, I knew he was, because he references it a lot, right? But, so anyway, um, I wish I would do, like, Fear the Walking Dead spinoffs. Especially how it ended. I, I will say it was kind of anticlimactic how it ended. I thought it would be like, I don't know, a different kind of ending, but it was what it was okay, it was whatever. Um and so when I was talking to my therapist about I mean it was literally two seconds, but he said he watched it a little bit past that point or something. And I said, Oh, I remember when he died because he died on this dumpster. And I'll never well, I'll never forget. Like it was like this big moment. He sent he or he goes, what? And I go, I remember when he died because he died in this dumpster. And he was just like, oh, yeah. Like, he didn't say anything. Well, that's not how he dies. Because he dies in the first episode of season seven. Because I watched it last night. I was like, my therapist is good about not giving away secrets of TV shows. He is not a spoiler at all like I am. I've spoiled TV shows left and right. Because, like, he, he had to have known when I said, oh, he dies in that dumpster, that that wasn't true because he dies in the first episode of season seven. And as I watched it, I, like, kind of remembered it. But I was like, I, this one part because, well... Anyway, it is violent. I forgot how violent The Walking Dead is. Fear of the Walking Dead is violent, but it's not as violent as The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead is really violent. I forgot that. So I watched that last night, that first episode, and then I went to bed. And had such a hard time falling asleep. And then I got up today, and I was like, well, I want to make these videos, and do this, and do that. And so, yeah. And, um, that's about the spice of life. So this weekend's just going to be about relaxing, finishing the graphic novels, Murder Road, walking, taking naps, filming a few videos maybe here and there, not pushing too hard, taking a few days to just kind of take it easy. Take it easy. This guy is still working on their kitchen over here. It kind of cracks me up because... They said that he was supposed to be gone by like Monday or Tuesday. He, like I said, he's super, super nice. But he said to me the other day about something about, well, he's very particular about his work. 
which I love that with people. And he said something about, like, he's going, he, I don't know if it's like his girlfriend or his wife or just his partner or whatever, but, like, they work together, this guy, this guy and girl. And he's like, yeah, we're going to Minnesota to do this job and whatever. And then he said something today about, like, having to push it back because he's not done with the kitchen yet. But he said that he would be done with the kitchen, he told them, like, Monday or Tuesday. Oh, it's my... I was like, my neighbor, her husband has been gone like all day because his car's been gone all day. And then I just, he's parked out in the driveway. So yeah, so he's still not done with the kitchen yet. But he's super, super nice. Really quiet actually for a worker. Like other than the few times that I've been, you guys were like, yeah, really? He's been like out there. But no, you like, I mean, we've had other construction done like um, over there and over there and whatever, where it's like all day sawing and loud. Watch, he'll start sawing as soon as I say that. Where it's like all day sawing and stuff like that. I mean, he's not wow. Like it's like m a moment, and then like two hours later, another moment. Like he's super, super quiet. Really nice, very friendly. Always, whenever I walk outside, whether I'm getting the mail or walking Boo, he always says hi. He's super friendly to Boo Radley. Really, just a nice guy. My neighbor across the street. She said. One of the reasons he would be great for you to work on your house is <laughs> because he keeps the same hours as you. He he does, leaves there at like nine or 10 o'clock at night some nights. And I was like, what do you mean by that? And she was like, well, he gets up real late sometimes like you do too. He's not up at like six or seven like us. He doesn't get here till like at least noon. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I haven't actually, did I see her earlier? Was she was she out here getting her mail or was that yesterday? I feel like that was yesterday. That I said something to her about getting her mail because she usually asks me about Survivor and I haven't watched Survivor this week. Somebody sent me a DM though and they said, doesn't Kenzie give you vibes of somebody else? Who did they say? I don't have, like, my phone's not out here. I can't remember who they said though, but I love Kenzie on Survivor. Now watch I say that and she probably got kicked off this week, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, I haven't watched it yet. Tonight I'm going to watch Survivor and Amazing Race. Alex doesn't watch those shows. Oh, what did we say we were going to start watching t last night? I think we're going to start watching... Well, I, he might start watching it before it ends. But I'm like, here's where I'm at. Unless it's a show that's like on regular television, like Survivor, Amazing Race, RuPaul's Drag Race, where it's like a show, like a competition show or something like that. Or a reality show. If it's like one of these limited limited episode series they put out like on Apple or Hulu or whatever where they le release three episodes and then one well Loot I'm watching out because Alex and I are watching it together but oh, we watched Loot last night too that's what we watch I'm not on these shows that are like eight to ten episodes six to eight ten episodes until the whole series is out I'm not watching it anymore I'm so glad I did that with True Detective um, I'm just not doing it anymore because I then what it's like with Hijack I waited I was so excited to watch that every single week so like Palm Royale like that commercial came on for it the ad what do we call them commercials anymore the commercial came on for it last night after we were watching Loot and I was like, oh my god, I want to see this so bad. Well, Alex had watched, I think it was Watch What Happens Live with Kristen Wiig and Rick, uh, Ricky Martin, who are both on it. And he was like, yeah, I kind of want to watch it too. It's getting really dark. It's going to start pouring down rain. I can just feel it. And he was like, yeah, I kind of want to watch it too. And he was like, do you want to watch it together? And I go, I'm not going to watch it till it's all out. And he goes, well, how many episodes is it? I said, I don't know, like eight or ten. But like, I, he goes, how many are out so far? And I said, I think five. I think maybe like the six ones coming out this week or whatever. And he looked, and it was like the six ones coming out this week. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to watch it until they're all out because I, I want to binge watch it. You know, he has so many shows that he has said he wanted to watch. That like Mayor of East Town, he's never watched. What was he watching? Shit's Creek. What was he watching the other night? a gossip girl for the 15th time i'm like <laughs> but then what cracks me up is like he so i told him about that three body problem which i started watching in miami and i haven't even finished it yet i think I, i'm not even i think i got through the first or second episode he binged that literally like the day that we were on like coming back from miami he watched that that finished the whole thing on the trip back like at the airport and on the flight i mean he was done with it like when we came back i was like and it was so funny because I said, did you like it? And he goes, I w I, he goes yeah, I, I'm kind of surprised that you got into it. And I was like, why? And he was like, because it's really not your kind of show at all. And I was like, well, how did it end? And he goes, I mean, it really didn't have like an ending. He goes, I would probably have another season to it or something. Yeah, it's starting to rain a little bit. But um, 
we either both love the same shows or he loves shows that I don't like at all. He likes really like science fiction y kind of stuff too that I don't. Like, I like more layman's term science fiction. Like, I like, like, he hates zombie stuff. Alex is so terrible. He's so scared of zombies. It's so cute. Like, if he comes in the room and I have, like, even if he hears the sound of the zombies, he'll be like, oh, can you pause that? He hates it. And he's always like, because I grew up, like, when I grew up in Venezuela, like, that was real. Like, people were coming back to life. I'm like, Alex, it's not real. He's like, well, I know it's not real, but it's real. He's like, it happens. And I'm like, okay, Alex, it doesn't happen. <laughs> but he won't watch that. He used to love horror movies. He doesn't love horror movies as much anymore. Unless they're, like, religious horror movies. Like, he loves The Nun, those movies. Like, any kind of, like, that kind of stuff. He loves all of that. Um, we saw an ad for something. What did he send me? Oh, he sent me the commercial for, or the trailer for The New Strangers. I think it's, like, a remake of The Strangers. He really wants to see that. So that horror movie. He likes those kind of horror movies. But, like, the gore and the... He used to love that stuff. He doesn't love that anymore. Um... Alex loves, like, Spanish shows, too. So, I don't know. We've got a couple shows we're watching right now together. Loot, RuPaul's Drag Race, Vanderpump Rules. He's not watching The Valley. He's not interested at all. I saw this article today that came out that said that one couple that they fight the whole time on the show and now they're getting divorced, it said that she admitted to the fact that she used him the whole time and was never really in love with him or something like that. I was like, this is, what is, this is so bizarre. I'm so confused by what is going on with all these reality shows. It's like this, this girl that's on Vanderpump Rules, she's dating Katie and she's, so she was Sheena's babysitter and then not, she didn't babysit Sheena. She was, Sheena hired her to babysit her daughter, Summer Moon, who is, by the way, absolutely adorable. That little girl is so cute. And, um, and Brock is like, he reminds me of Peter on Atlanta because he's always in the women's business, but I really like Brock. I really like Brock a lot on Vanderpump Rules. He's like, he and Sheena are like one of the only reasons I'm still watching it, if you want to know the truth. Um, but anyway, uh, so Sheena had hired this girl, I can't remember what her name is, this is Tina. <laughs> Tina! Eat your dinner. Was that from Napoleon Dynamite? What's her, why can't I think of her name? <clears throat> anyway, it's not Tina, but she was her babysitter for Summer Moon. Then she introduced her to Schwartz, and then she told Schwartz, she's like, oh my God, I think you're like totally hot. And he was like, really? And then they went on a date. <laughs> Because she said he was really hot. How many women have told Schwartz that he's hot? I mean, he's a reality TV star. And then, um, then Katie started being interested in her. Why can't I think of what the girl's name is? And then she started being interested in her. And then they're at like this bar, and Schwartz is across the room, and he has a date with her that night. And Katie starts tongue kissing her at this table. <laughs> it's so bizarre. And I'm like, and all these people are like, oh my God, do you think she really likes Katie? Do you really think she likes Schwartz? I'm, th I'm thinking to myself, she really just wants to be on Vanderpump Rules. Like, are you guys that big of idiots at this point? Somebody that is trying that hard, that's been a babysitter and now is dating two people that are a divorced couple, like, they are wanting to be on this show so bad. Like, that is so obvious to me. I mean, there are people out there that would do anything to be on these reality shows. You know what I mean? Anything. I think that's probably the biggest mistake that I ever made in my life. No true story. I mean, when I was watching Real World, when I was like in college and it was like Heather and Eric Neese and all those people in New York City, the very first Real World, I should have like, at that point, I should have like tried to get on one of those reality shows. No true story, I should have. I could have been like, you know, Johnny Bananas or something today because he's close to my age, I think. Well, you'll look it up. He's probably like 15 years younger than me. But he's been on like The Challenge and all those shows, you know. I could have done that, but I'm not athletic. <laughs> But I could have been, like, a, a Big Brother super fan, a superstar, though. Like, I could have won Big Brother, and then I could have, like, gone on, like, the All-Star show, and then I could have been, like, a host, and I could have started a podcast. I could have been my whole life just if I had gone on Big Brother. But I never wanted to be away from my dogs. See? That's the problem. Survivor back in the day was, like, 16 weeks. 
No, it wasn't. And it was like, how many days was it? It was like six weeks or something. Now it's like, they call it the new, the new generation or the new era or something, and it's like 26 days. Fuck, I could do 26 days. <laughs> we just did that in Miami. I could do 26 days on Survivor. I probably wouldn't make it past day one anyway. I'm not scared about the sharks jumping into the Fiji and all kinds of stuff. That's my way to get to Fiji, okay? I'm like, I don't know, but like, I wouldn't even want to get on the flight to fly there to go to, to Survivor, but maybe just to meet Surrey Fields. But listen, I could do 26 days, but I don't think I could make it past day one. That's, the, the social game is so hard on that show, but I live for it. Amazing Race. Caroline wants to do Amazing Race so bad. So I said to her the other day, I said, you know, so many people reach out to me. I get DMs all the time. They're like, you and Caroline need to start a podcast. I said something about it with like our grandma story and whatever. And people are like, oh, I need to know more about the grandma story and whatever. So the other day I said to Caroline, she always just laughs when I say this stuff to her. I go, would you ever be willing to do, like I've asked Alex. Alex is like, I'd love to do a podcast, but I don't think that you and I having like a regimented schedule together doing something, he goes, would work. And he was like, you know, Tanya is wanted to do like a Housewives podcast forever, but she doesn't want to be edited. And Tanya's like, you have to watch everything you say on a podcast. And she's like, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. She's like, I'm just, you know, whatever. And so I've wanted to do a podcast forever. Melissa and I were going to do the Boogeyman Besties. People still ask about it all the time. And we were going to do horror movie coverage. Melissa's gotten so busy with, she's now in like three or four different dog rescue things and she's got all this other kind of stuff on. Plus she is the world's biggest New Kids on the Block super fan. She goes to all these like block parties. I'm living for it. She's so happy doing that. And so it just really is not a great time for us. We kept on saying we we're going to revisit it. And we really haven't, we haven't really talked about it recently. So I don't really honestly think that that will probably happen. But the idea of doing a podcast still interests me. And so people have always said, like, you and Caroline should do something. And so I said to Caroline the other day, you know, we, we talked about, like, doing, like, a reality show jokingly. Like, we would love to have a reality show called Cousin Cousin. It would be, like, our lives, you know, paralleling each other. And um, I said, what do you think about doing, like, a podcast? And she was like started laughing. She's like, what would we do a podcast about? I go, I don't know. I said, we could, I could mention in a video and see what people would want us to do a podcast about. She's like, are you talking about doing this podcast about grandma? And I was like, well, Caroline, I go, we could do that. I go, that could be like season one. And then that could turn into something else. I said, but if you're not that interested in it, no, it doesn't even have to be about that. That could just be one episode of the podcast or whatever. And she's like, well, what would we do a podcast about? I go, I don't know. We could just pop culture, you know, stories or emotions or feelings about things or whatever. I don't know. We can, we can figure it out. I said, if we're going to do it, let's not start it until like at least 2025. And she just started laughing and she was like, why so far off? And I go, because I always say I'm going to do this stuff and then I never end up doing it and whatever. I said, if we're going to do it, like I want to plan it out. I want to have it thought out. We can meet like once a week and we can like film like two episodes of the podcast, whatever. But I want to like figure out the space, figure out how we're going to do it, all that kind of stuff. And she was like, okay. And um, so I thought she was like, would never be interested in it at all. Well, that night she texted me and she was like, cousin, cousin podcast coming 2025. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but we have no idea what, it, what, what would Caroline and I even talk about. We have no clue. I feel like this, like, it's not even sunny, but I feel like it's so bright, like, over there. I don't feel like the lighting's any different over here. I don't know what it is. First, I thought it was maybe because, like, it's better over here, actually, isn't it, the lighting? I thought maybe it was the color of the shirt that I was wearing. I thought she was just walking her dog or running down the street. Now she's driving her car down the street. I'm like, I am losing my mind. Um, I, what was I going to say? But the pot, oh, the lighting. I, I thought for a while it had to do with the button, and then it doesn't seem to have to do with the button. Button, button, who's got the button? And then I thought it had to do with like the color of the shirt that I was wearing. And so that's why I wore maybe blue today, and I wore like a darker hoodie yesterday, but that doesn't seem to make a difference. And maybe it's just I'm seeing something different, and there's nothing different in the lighting. Oh my lord. <laughs> And there's, when people ask me why I don't want to be a dad, that's why, right there. Um, people, uh, people, <laughs> don't call people people. But anyway, what was I going to say about the podcast? Yeah, so, Caroline and I will throw that idea around for like a while and then it'll never happen. That's exactly what's going to happen. So don't be like, oh, Peter's starting a podcast with Caroline and he said he's going to do it. So it better start at January 1st. It's like, no. It's an idea we're throwing around. It may never happen. It may never start. It may never happen. It may never, we're just throwing an idea around. But if we were going to do it, what would be things we could talk about? What could be like the focus of it, do you think? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. But 
There's a plane flying away. I wonder where they're going. Probably somewhere exciting. Isn't that funny? My next thought was, well, I'm kind of excited about my weekend of just relaxing and watching TV shows and stuff. No, I am, though, you know? I love just having a relaxing weekend, and other than Alex being gone tomorrow afternoon, he's going to be here this whole weekend, so be naps and all that kind of stuff, and yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting. All right, well, listen, I am going to get off here now. I can hear, like, kids, like, playing in the street. Blind down, playing down the street, but I can't see him. I can't even tell. Like, the sound is so weird in this neighborhood. I can't tell if it's down there or down there. I think it's actually she came home because her friend has little kids, and so her friend comes over sometimes for dinner. And I think it's, like, in the driveway. And I'm thinking it's coming from over. The sound is so weird in this neighborhood. All right. I'm going to get off here now, and um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Friday and a fantastic beginning to your weekend, and if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Short outro, be kind to one another, be kind to yourself, treat yourself well, relax, do some self-care this weekend, do something that will make you happy. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.